thing about the Philadelphia Clef Club, of course it came from uh, the Black Musician Union 274 and the Clef Club was the social arm of 274 and when 274 was dissolved by uh, the National Musician Union 77, the Clef Club remained because uh, the union had separated its assets from its actual charter. So the charter was lost but the assets of 274 was saved and the club club was that one of those assets and they had his own building the building was located several places first it was on south broad street and then it moved to 13th and washington avenue and basically uh it did uh the entertainment part for musicians after gigs they could come to the club club and they had a bar and they had the uh, place where musicians could practice and they even had a performing group these go in the communities but they didn't have education a department and I was leaving Settlement Music School at the time and when I left Settlement Music School I wanted to start my own program and someone suggested the Clef Club and I went to the Clef Club talked to the board and I was accepted and that's when the education program started the Clef Club. Well we all know what a great city Philadelphia is when it comes to its tradition, its, its music tradition and not just in jazz and R&B but also in classical uh, there's so many great uh, musicians that come out of this city. So when I got my first electric bass when I was nine, uh, I fell in love with it right away. I had already grown up in the music, as you well know, my dad being a bass player, my great uncle being a bass player. Uh, my uncle, my mother's brother, worked for WHAT Radio. So, I mean, I was surrounded by the music all the time. So uh, when I started playing the electric bass, uh, my mother had the, uh, I, I think she had an interesting situation where she tried to get me to stop practicing so much so I would do my homework, you know. Uh, she's like, look, will you please put that bass down just for a minute, come eat your <laughs> dinner, and then do your homework, and then go back to practicing. But I mean, that prying that bass out of my hand was like, you know, I was like trying to pull a, a wisdom tooth. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's fun. We both have fun together. You know, um, we uh, raised each other, so to speak. And he always had some wonderful things to say, things to make us laugh all the time. And we just had to find something to keep him busy. You know, so the best thing was finding something he enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and in this case, we know his bass was one of them. Yeah. You know, you have no idea when you go into a, a situation with young people. And what you do as a teacher, you just present them the information that you think they need to succeed. And in my particular case, it was music. And it started when I got, first got out of college, and I was working with uh, the Better Break Music Camp. And then later on, uh, with Settlement, thanks to Old Dean Pope, because Old Dean Pope was the director, and when he was leaving uh, the position at Settlement, I took over. And those kids that was in that summer program was Christian McBride and Joey DeFrancesco. Well, he came later, uh, Robert Landon, those young men. And uh, they were my first group. You know, so at that time, most of the musicians hadn't had a lot of classical training. Christian was classically trained first. So that's the very vehicle that allowed him to go into Juilliard and become as great as he was in jazz. You know, so uh, with the help of Wynton Marcellus and Love and Hines, of course, and as many other teachers that I don't want, it's just too many to name, but I thank them all the time, you know. But this was important to be good at what he did and to enjoy what he did is to be able to compete, you know, and he did a great job. Yeah. Uh, well, when I first started playing, I didn't really have a specific 
musical path in mind. I just wanted to play with as many great musicians as I possibly could, no matter what genre they were from. Because, uh, you know, knowledge is, is infinite. You know, just... It, it, and, and when musicians get sort of in a bag, so to speak, when they sort of subconsciously make the decision, oh, I play this kind of music, or this is the scene that I'm on, you have also subconsciously said, I'm not really going to learn any other style, or I'm not really going to be proactive about learning any other style of music. And, uh, you know, again, I think a lot of it had to do with being from Philly and being in Philly, but I had the best classical teachers. I had the best jazz scene. I had the, ble the best R&B scene. Uh, the the hip hop scene here in those early days was killing. You know, Schoolie D lived like a couple of blocks from us. So I mean, I had the best of all the world. So why not get a little bit of all of that? Yeah. You know. Hi, this is Christian McBride. W U R D is the word. <laughs>